All right, here we go. Welcome back to the Game Stash Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Women Liberty, and with me is... Boaz Muhammad Yusuf. And today, we've got some stuff. Uh, we've got the Neo Gaff Gaff. Uh, we've got uh, Noel Chie and um, Big Wolf Guy announced for uh, Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle. We really need a new name for that. It's it's I, rough. I just go BXT. Now. BXT. BXT. Is that what we're going with now? Yeah, and it's Waldstein, Tanner. We'll see. You wrote in the notes, Big Guy Revealed. I'm just using what you wrote. <laughs> Oh yeah, by the way, SMT5 got announced for the Switch, which is rad. Uh, character pass for DBC announced. 24 characters are uh, launched, heavily implied, and release date has been changed to January 26. And then Visceral Game sadly gets shut down. Um, so before we get into that, let's talk about what we played this week. Uh, so I didn't really play that much. I kind of puttered around in Overwatch. Uh, continued a lot in uh, Link to the Past. Uh, so I got two. I'll, I'll talk about two things that I did this week. So I got to link to link to the past, right? Mm-hmm. It's a good game. Lots of fun. I got to one of the most frustrating bosses I have ever seen. Oh. Like absolutely frustrating. And I, I I looked it up and I was like, oh yeah, this is one of the most frustrating bosses in Zelda history. And what's the boss called? It's a. I don't know the name of the boss, but it's 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 a, it's a moth. Like, like, Link to the Past Moth Boss. It's just a giant moth. And oh, the Mofula. Thi- Mofula, I guess. Yeah. So the thing about this... Oh, they, bo- really, they really dug, dug deep yeah, they, that name. Yeah, for that name, yeah. So the thing about that boss... Oh, man. So oh, the spikes? Oh, I'll explain. So, one, trying to fight this boss with the sword is pretty much impossible. So you can't, like, fight him regularly with, like, sword combos and spin attacks and whatnot because he's moving yeah. too fast, right? Uh-huh. And the other thing is is that he kind of moves in a weird, like, um, like pattern. So you have to use the fire rod, right? And okay. the, fire wa- the fire rod uses magic, which you have a limited supply of. So if you, don't, uh-huh. if you aren't prepared in this fight, you're going to have a rough time fighting because arrows don't work because i had a full stack of arrows ready to go and they just bounced off the boss and did nothing so i'm like okay so the fire rod is the only way to deal damage to this guy that's great rod so you're thinking like okay i got the fire rod and i got the boss that's moving in a weird position i can do this right well they wanted to make it challenging so they had spikes right oh yeah so you have these spikes that are flailing across the map right back and forth up and down left and right in random intervals there is no pattern to it so you have to just reflex on the fly and they went oh well that's not hard enough so they have the entire battlefield on conveyor belts so not only are you having to dodge spikes dodge the boss's attacks aim your fire rod to hit the boss you have to deal with the fact that there are conveyor belts that are moving your character so the speed, Damn. yeah. So this, and that's actually the hardest part. If all I had to deal was the spikes and just the boss itself, it wouldn't be a challenge. But the fact that I have to deal with the conveyor belts constantly, because it, it means that like the conveyor belts that are going against your direction means that you move slow, and the ones that are going uh, uh, with you means that you go fast. So you spike in movement on and off, on and off, on and off as you're circling around the battlefield. And it was just the hardest boss fight <laughs> in the entire game so far. Have you beaten it yet? I beat it, yeah. It, oh, it, look it, at you. It took me a while. A little bit of that stage well, come? Well, no, I didn't. I wanted, I was like, no, I'm beating this fair and square. But what I did oh, do... Oh, really? Yeah. Because I, I want I want to beat the bosses fair and square. I'm not going to, like, save scum mid-boss. <laughs> um, but what I did have to do was I had to save and quit leave the dungeon i had to i did a quest to go find the other two uh bottles because i only had one bottle at the time right okay and this guy's not even hitting for one health he's hitting for like two health or sorry two hearts Mm. so and i had like eight so if i get hit like so the spikes deal one damage uh sorry one heart and everything else does two so like literally if i get hit four times during that boss fight i'm done 
So, yeah. <laughs> so, but it was, you know, I just had to get, I had to get some empty bottles. I bought a bunch of blue potions, which it, full, it fills up your health and your uh, magic bar. And uh-huh. then the boss was doable. So that the, 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 it was basically I was try I was also kind of fighting the boss with the worst um, set of guidelines in the sense where I didn't have a full magic bar, I didn't have the ability to hit him with ranged attacks. All I had was the fire rod, but I could I could only use that for like a couple hits. So it was a really tough fight, but uh, overall I'm still enjoying the game a lot. It's a really really fun Zelda game. Uh. Um. And uh, the other thing that I briefly looked at, and I'm probably going to, maybe not next week, but maybe the week after, I might talk a little bit about. So I'm on, uh, I'm not on another site, which we'll be talking about, but I'm on, uh, I'm on like a, like a, like a Reddit site. And usually it has like, usually the topics are usually the same. Like it's, it's, you know, Overwatch or Hero Academia or whatever. They usually have like image boards of stuff. Yeah. And usually it's the same, it's the same, it's the same. And then occasionally something will come out of nowhere and grab everyone's attention, right? Okay. So, like, this is how I discovered um, A Night in the Woods. This is how I discovered uh, Undertale, right? Yeah. Um, so, all of a sudden, I see this w- visual novel pop up. Oh, boy. And it's at the very, very top. And I'm like, I click it. And every single picture has a warning spoilers on it. Like the entire like the entire page was just covered in like, do not click this if you want to get spoiled. And I'm like, oh, okay. okay. So I so and it, it's a free game. Like you can just download it for free on the PC. And I'm like, okay. What is this? What's so weird about this game? And the first thing that pops up is that you have to go through a yes yes agreement when you boot up the game that um you are you are saying that you are of this age um because this game is uh gonna scare you (laughs) i'm like oh and i think what it's trying to do is it's trying to be one of those games it's trying to be one of those things that i actually really really like in which it's like it pretends to be something but it really Uh isn't so it's a happy, uh, oh, I should actually say the game. The game is called uh, Doki Doki Literature Club, <laughs> which is a really, okay. which is, yeah, yeah. And I think he named it that very intentionally to fool people because I'm, I'm, and I, I know nothing. So don't tell me anything. I played like an hour um, and I'm looking at how they're setting up the story and I'm like, oh, this is gonna, what this, like, there is going to be a moment that everything goes to hell. Like I can already tell that something is wrong about, mm. and I actually really, really liked it. Uh, I, okay. didn't, I didn't get to play a whole, I didn't get to play a lot of it, but it just seemed it, the fact that I, the fact that the game boots up and says, prepare to be disturbed and then cuts to this goofy visual novel stuff makes me very excited to continue playing that um but that's basically what i played this week what about you fawaz wow (laughs) (laughs) okay so yeah i didn't really get a chance of oh actually i did play something this week it was really funny so i remember i don't know if you remember a couple podcasts ago I mentioned this uh, one game like a long time ago. I bought this one game, um, Shadow Tactics: Blades of the Shogun, right? Yes. And then you know I played the demo, and I was like, okay, this game is cool, so I bought it. So anyway, I was like, okay, let's let's start playing. So I booted the game up. I played for like five minutes. I was like, you know, I'd rather be doing anything else right now. So. <laughs> so yeah. solid, solid recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> solid recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> was it just like what was it about it was it just like it just was kind of boring or like you you would play a lot of stuff that was similar or like no i i played nothing similar maybe you know like i think i like it, it could be a couple of things one is that it could just be that 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 genre so that's like the isometric uh stealth game mm-hmm. it could just be that that genre is just not for me right um that might be the case or it could be a situation where like you need to let the game you need to give the game a little bit of time to build up um let's give the game a little bit of time to really get into its groove and stuff 
But yeah, all I know is I started uh, I, I started playing, and I was like, yeah, this isn't fun. This isn't fun. Yeah. yeah. That that's always a bummer when you're playing a game. It's not even that it's bad. It's just like I'm not having a good time with this. So gonna stop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I mean other than that, I mean I played a little bit more infinite. Um one thing that I do want to point out is that you know the combat system is fun. However, Mm-hmm. I do get the impression that they built the combat system, and then they just picked up and dropped the characters into the combat system because there are just some, like there are some characters that are just not designed to be in this game. You know, like mm. like like Hawkeye. So so a bunch of things that they did, um, they reduced the amount of chip damage like substantially. There's barely any chip damage because they wanted to kill zoning because like they have this stupid idea that you know like um so if you if you kill zoning then then um the scrubs will will like the game right um so yeah they, they want to kill zoning so there is like very little zoning in the game um there's no zoning in the game you you don't do chip damage and you can reflect um certain projectiles you can reflect most of hawkeye's projectiles so that makes like hawkeye not very good in this game. Um, then you've got mm-hmm. a character like Dante, where um, literally the second I saw the system, the fact that you could tag out in the middle of Super, I was like, wow, a million dollars is going to be overpowered in this. Yeah, yeah. sure enough. Sure enough. Because it because you just you, you backdash, create enough space between you and the opponent, do million dollars and tag, right? Mm-hmm. And then if they block any of the million dollars, they have to block all of it and you just run mix ups on them. So yeah, there's the, the I, I there's a couple of characters that are just like that. Where mm-hmm. I feel like they um uh, Chris is another one. Chris is just garbage in this game. You yeah. know? Um um because they, they ported the characters over, but like I feel like they didn't redesign the characters well enough, anyway, to fit into this new system that they've developed. So, so yeah, it's re- mm-hmm. it's it's resulting in some um, um, it's imbalance. Imbalance is, I guess, though, yeah, the word you're looking for. I heard Hulk wasn't really that good. Um, no, Hulk's not good because they also changed the way armor works in this game, right? Um, mm-hmm. How it used to work in the old game was that you got one hit. Uh, it didn't matter, right? Mm-hmm. You could you could armor through everything if it was only one hit. You could armor through at least one hit of, of practically everything your opponent is doing. How it works now is that armor goes through lights completely. Um, mm-hmm. I think you have to hit them with like six or seven lights to break armor. Mm-hmm. Um, however, heavies beat armor clean, even if it's just one hit of a heavy it beats armor. So all those stupid Hulk players that didn't know, actually know how to play, they just used to mash heavy all the time. Now it's like that, oh, I'm mashing heavy. Oh, he mashed heavy too. Wow, I'm getting hit. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, you can't so be, yeah. I can see that being kind of uh, a problem. <laughs> that, yeah, so like a lot of the cast, and I was thinking, I was, when I was trying to like build my teams, I realized that like a solid half of the cast, I'm just looking at them and they're like, huh, you guys kind of look like trash. So, um, mm-hmm. I mean, and when I say look like trash, I don't mean look like trash, like, visually, because they all look like trash. You know, I mean, like... <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, we've, we've, we've beaten that dead horse, like, Yeah, for a I mean, while. like, from a gameplay point of view, I'm looking at these characters, and I, I don't want to play any of these characters, right? Like, well, mm-hmm. solid, like, 15... If I, 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 should, I should have sat down and counted before we did the podcast, but, like, off the top of my head, at least... 15, 16, maybe even 17 characters that I just look at and I'm like, that I'm never going to play you, ever. Yeah. But ignoring the fact that you are bad. You're just boring, but then a lot of them are just bad, too. So, yeah, exactly. So there is that, but um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back to this point in a, in a, in a little bit. But, but yeah, that's... Um, you know, it's, it's still a pretty fun game. They screwed the pooch in just about every other element of the game. Mm-hmm. But, you know, balance issues aside, the game is still a lot of fun. So, yeah, shout outs to them for that. But, you know, speaking of screwing the pooch, uh, <laughs> if you want to get into our first... Oh, my God, that was a horrible segue. That, that was a nice. horrible segue, considering what I we're just, about to talk about. about it you know, I, you know, I, it I, took I, you a couple seconds, but woof, woof. I, I I didn't mean it like that. Okay, okay. So let's get into the into the into the news, and then you people understand why we feel like yeah, that. Yeah. So, 
So Neil Gaff is not doing too well right now uh, because the, the one of the founders of Neil Gaff is under um, sexual um, under like allegations, sexual allegations or misconduct, and uh, yeah, people are not happy about that. And there was a as, as, they, shouldn't as they shouldn't be, and there was a some the the allegations seemed relatively pretty tight as far as like you know like they seem legit. They're not like oh somebody's just throwing this out of nowhere. And of course, like how does this site respond? Well, the site is down for maintenance, <laughs> and it's like really. Hmm, and they they started banning anyone who brought this topic up, and it was like, it just added so much fuel to the fire, and it's sort of like, it's sort of come to this thing where it's like a lot of people are saying, well, Neo Gaff is done, like the 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 whole the whole point of Neo Gaff was sort of like, like the comment sections in Neo Gaff, there's a lot of freedom of speech in there. And the fact that this guy was ban like basically banning them because they were calling him out on his these horrible allegations, it's like yeah, it, it, it's a it's a really shitty uh, it's a shitty situation for sure. And uh, of course he came back and denied everything because of course he did. And uh, yeah, it it but it is it is kind of it's fascinating in the sense where it's like when I always find it crazy when you get to when you see. A website that is big like a big website just burn in uh in seconds right or like you see something that is well established this may this is reminding me it's ob it's obviously not on the same scale but it reminds me of the fine brothers in incident and how the fine brothers in incident was essentially what the the fine brothers were a youtube channel that popularized the react uh like kids react teens react right yeah so what happened was is that they come out they came out with a video that was essentially them trying to sell you on the idea that if you're going to make a react channel you're going to do it through the fine brothers program because huh. we own the co we own the rights to react videos they are our idea so they are our property yeah they tried to trademark they that. tried to trademark it and obviously that really backfired and it was sh it was insane to watch like their subscriber count go from like i want to say like it was high it was like 16 million to 7 million in a week like it was it was crazy and and especially like them them and, a, and it's very similar too actually because they posted a response to that and they tried to explain themselves and it just did more damage like it was it was a really like half-assed apology and saying like no 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 you you misunderstood what we meant right and like there's especially there's a part in the apology where one of the guys rolls his eyes which is like, really? You're gonna. You have the ability to cut that for fuck's sake, but you left. You chose to leave that in. It's like, God. So, yeah. We don't really need to talk that much about it, but I just. It's it's always fascinating to me when a big website, like whether it be NeoGAF or something like the Fine Brothers channel, it just kind of just blows up, like, and just crashes and burns. Yeah. So it will be interesting in the sense where it's like a lot of leaks come from NeoGAF, you know? Like yeah, a lot. That, this is true. NeoGAF was like leak central. I actually don't go on NeoGAF at all. The only reason why I know of NeoGAF is because, yeah, like every time there's a game I'm following, um, I always like, and something leaks about the game, I always, it's like, oh yeah, this leak came from a quote unquote reputable source on NeoGAF. So, so, um, um, that's really all I know about them. Yeah. yeah this was unfortunate. And, you know, I just wanted to apologize again. Like, because, um, like, I just, I just wanted to make sure, I just wanted to make sure people, people knew that I wasn't, um, um, I wasn't making light of this situation. I, 
Mm -hmm. I didn't realize the connotation of what I was saying when I said it. Um, well, yeah, like that's that's was, that's yeah, an honest I'll, mistake. Yeah. Yeah, I was just trying to segue from one point to another. Literally, right as I said it, and then I thought about what we're about to talk about. I was like, wow, I couldn't have picked. A you, worse couldn't have picked, you couldn't have picked <laughs> um, a worse but yeah, one. Just, but yeah, like, like, no, no, no. Yeah, like, I think, yeah. I think we understand that, and like, we do. We are, do, we are taking this seriously, and it's, it's, it's just, it's just one of those things where, yeah, it's, it's a hot, it's a hot topic, um, at the moment because oh, it's, mess. it's, it's a mess, and like, Neo Gaff is a really big site, and it will be interesting to see. You know, NeoGAF is still online right now, but it will be interesting to see if any legal, you know, actions are taken. You know, like no, I, think, I think the website is going to be fine. Um, think, like, I think uh, he, I can't speak for him. On the other hand, yeah, um, that's if the, true. If the allegations end up being true, I'll be you know ends up in in, in jail. Yeah, I'll, I'll be spend some time in uh, in prison. But um, as far as the website itself, I see no reason for them to take the website down. Yeah. The website's done nothing wrong. Le you know? Like um, yeah, let's let's hope that maybe they'd be under new management at the very yeah, least. Yeah, yeah, but then you know, there's a fact that yeah, it has it has lost a lot of goodwill and a lot of the mods. A lot of the mods quit, so it's going to be a transition period for the site. They might not survive, I guess we'll see, but um, best of luck to the people involved with the site. Who are not and, dirtbags. Um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, who are not dirtbags. And hopefully if this guy does turn out to be to be uh, a dirtbag rapist, hopefully he gets he gets convicted and spends a good amount of time in prison. Yeah. Um, but let's uh, let's move on to something a little less serious. Um, we got uh, Noel Chie and uh, so what's his name for us? What's his name? Uh, oh oh um, oh! You're giving me shit now. <laughs> Waldstein, Waldstein. There we go. It's Waldstein. Uh, it's Waldstein, folks. So this is uh, BXT, which is what I'm calling it now. Yeah, BXT. Um, so BXT's, uh, so they showed off, uh, Chie, you know, it's, it's, it's Chie, it's Chie from Persona 4 Ultimate, uh, they showed Noel, um, and, uh, yeah, like, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty cool, it's like, uh, honestly, like, it's cool, but it, I was talking to you earlier about this, like, as far as the Persona side, side goes, they're picking the most obvious choices. You know, it's funny hearing you talk about this because I swear we had the same conversation two podcasts ago. I know. Except I was the one complaining about this with Dragon Ball. Mm -hmm. And you were like, oh, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Well, here's the problem is that they're the obvious choices, but I've also already seen them. There's nothing new about them. Period. Yeah. And yeah, it, that's, a, that's a very good rebuttal. Yeah. Ah, I took my hats to you. Tana. Thank you. I, um, I have my moments. They occasionally <laughs> prop up. Occasionally, Fawaz will go, oh, not bad. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, huh, I've got, I've got nothing to say here. Um, but no, no, I, I get what you mean. But I mean, like, they, they had to get a lot of the obvious people out of the way first. Mm. I feel like, I feel like um, uh, how it's going to go, if I had to predict, it's going to be, um, uh, so you, Yosuke, Chie, and then Yukiko. And from there, they're going to start branching out. Because I don't imagine they're going to give us the entire investigation crew. Because, like, like I, I, you know, I did the math. Because this is four different franchises, right? Even if they, even if this game has 40 characters, yeah. for it to be split evenly, you're looking at, like, seven characters per game. You know, so they don't have a lot of, despite the fact that, you know, they're reusing assets, mm -hmm. they don't have a lot of room for a lot of people. So, so yeah, I imagine once they get Chie and potentially Yukiko out of the way, I think they're going to like start branching out a little bit and getting, and getting some more offbeat choices. At least I hope so. Because mm -hmm. yeah, I'm with you, you know, I, I want to see now, obviously I don't like, I'm not expecting any new characters. Um, the only new characters we're going to get are with the, with Ruby. But, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I would like to see something less obvious, you know? Okay. So, I mean, it's like re, it's like the Ryu Ken and Chun Li situation, right? Mm. You know, you 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 um, yeah, you is Ryu, um, y Yosuke, Yosuke is Ken. Yosuke is Ken, and then Chie. So I mean, if Chie is the first girl that they reveal, does that does that make Chie the official best girl of Persona? <sighs> A lot. I, there are there are many who fight in the Chie is best waifu war. However, I will say Nato is very close. Uh, very, very, very close. The problem is with Naoto Auto? is Naoto. Yes, the you detective. You want that? You want that looks like a boy. You mean the awesome, cool detective, who is the smartest character in the entire cast? 
me do one that looks like a boy. <sighs> Yo, oh wait, no. It's the one who I knew it was a girl the moment she stepped on screen, but it took Fawaz a goddamn long time to figure that out. Let's let's correct in my, that. In my defense, uh -huh. um, we've had this point? we've had this discussion before. Kanji was attracted to her, and Kanji and like all signs in the game pointed towards Kanji being gay. So yeah, you know, but I like, always found that bizarre because in Golden it really sets, and this is this is why I'd say Chie is probably still best waifu, is that it really sets up that Kanji really likes Naoto and kind of wants to hit it off at some point. Yeah. Like, especially in the winter scene, where they're skiing, which is adorable. Like, Kanji and... Uh, okay, 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 let's stop ourselves. Or we could just... We could... This, this, is, a, this is a black hole going down. This is a black like, hole, but I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I kind of like this. Is this going to just turn into waifu wars right now? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, no, I love Chie, so I'm glad she's in. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. um, I, I regret picking Rise on my first playthrough. And Maria, my second one. I should have done. Chie. Wow, you picked literally the two worst ones. Okay, in my defense. Oh, yeah, yeah? Okay, so I have a bad habit of leaning toward the easy girls, right? Uh, crap, I have said that. Yeah. This has been a <laughs> podcast of crap, I shouldn't have said that for a while. So, so, um. So Reese on my first playthrough, I was like, well, she's easy, so whatever, we'll go with that. Yeah, we'll and go with that. And my second playthrough, I was like, Marie is edgy, let me try something that I've never tried before. <laughs> so, so I went with Marie, because I never dated a girl edgy. like Marie in real life. You know, that's what I do in video uh, games. I do things that I never do in, 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 in real life. But mm, after I finished yeah. my second playthrough, I was like, man, Chie is actually just awesome. Chie is the best, and she has, like, the greatest dream. She just wants to be a cool cop that knows kung yeah. fu. Like, that's the best. We're kind yeah. of getting off track right now. We were talking one about... Last one, last one last... Oh, okay. No, let's go back. We're back in. We're back yeah, in. One last thing before we leave BXT. So mm -hmm. when this was revealed, uh, I, I, I found this out on uh, the uh, Kappa, our Kappa. Uh, oh, yeah. It's accessible, by the way. Don't go there. Don't go there. Um, but yeah, I went to our Kappa, and the top comment was, um, great, my wife who made it in. Also, Chi and Noel are cool too, I guess. And it just made me laugh because you know you read it and you're like, oh, okay, he's probably really, he's probably talking about Chi and Noel or Noel, and then he's like, no, actually, he's talking about Wallstein. I'm like, oh, yeah. So Although he's, he's it, yeah, guess. yeah, Wall. Hey, listen, listen. I I hate to be that guy, but he should have said husbando, but it, that wouldn't have that wouldn't have made the joke work. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he was trying. I mean, he was trying to be funny, and you know, he was trying to um, and, and you know, he was trying to do it in misdirection. A couple, a couple of things with the gameplay. Actually, you know, we spent so much time talking about. Yeah, let's talk about the gameplay. Hey, there's okay, a thought. So, so they actually had some gameplay uh recently, and um, um, the game. Has some interesting aspects. So, so a couple, a couple points that I noticed. One, the damage is incredibly high right now. Mm -hmm. So I, I imagine slash hope that that won't be the case when the game launches. Because if it is, because I, because like, like, like people don't know how to play the game yet, and people are doing like a solid seventy percent with combos, right? So right. Yeah. Damage is extremely high right now. So I hope they fix that. Um. Uh. The other thing is that. Assists take permanent damage. This this actually caught me off guard. So in Marvel vs. Capcom and in Dragon Ball Fighters, if you call your assist and the assist gets hit, it yeah. takes damage, but that damage is recoverable. If you hit the assist for 99% of its HP and you just leave it, it will heal back all of it to full HP. However, in the gameplay that I watched, now everything here is subject to change, uh, but in the gameplay I watched, when the assist got hit, they took a little bit of recoverable health, but they actually took permanent... Uh, permanent uh, there was permanent damage there, so right. that's that's really interesting. Um, I've never played a versus game that had that, so it's gonna be. I mean, you know, maybe something that ends up not mattering. I don't imagine it won't matter. I imagine it actually probably matter a fair bit. Uh, the other thing is that it looks like the game has a similar system to um, MVCI. This right. looks like the MVCI. This looks like the, this looks like the anime version of MVCI. Uh, mm -hmm. It's like it has a similar system to Infinite, where you can tag in your your other character while you're getting comboed. Um, right. Yeah. And uh, those are the main things that I spotted in the in the gameplay. There are a couple other things, but um, uh, those are the those are the actually important ones. But all in all, man, the game looks the game is looking is looking cool. It's looking like fun. Can't wait mm. to see more. Hopefully, we get some cool Persona characters, and yeah. it's not just. 
the obvious. You know, you know what I want. The, if you're gonna do, if you're gonna do you, uh, Yusuke and Chie, I want you to go. I want you to go off the beaten path. Do like Adachi or do like um, Mary or something like that. Pick an off character that we wouldn't expect. Right? Well, that guy with the dog. Give us the guy with the dog. Oh, fucking uh, Ken. Ken. Yeah, give us he, Ken. He's, yeah, you know what? I would actually be really happy with Ken. Because, like, Ken was really interesting mechanic-wise. Because um, he was, like, two characters. It was Ken and the dog. Kamaru. Yeah. Um, so, like, do, do that. Do that for next time. But, uh, well, speaking of Persona... <laughs> so, uh, the original Persona... Which is not correct at all, in statement-wise. Uh, SMT5 got announced for the Switch. And, you know, they showed off a couple seconds trailer. Y y they showed off some angels and demons that just, just the corpses in, like, a metro city. And it showed, like, two people getting swarmed by, like, these flying gargoyles. And then he reaches his hand out and there's a bunch of rose petals. And then it just says SMT5. Um, so as I'm, I'm the one who played SMT four, right? So I've got yeah. more stake in this. So SMT four was a really, really, really interesting game. Like I loved the concepts that they were playing with in that game. Uh, um, there's a couple things. One, it was so blatantly, this is a, this was a game more than anything where every time I picked it up, I was like, man, if this was just on an actual console, I would be playing it more. The fact that it was on the 3DS really hurt it because you could tell that they had to budget things down because they couldn't. Like for example, there is no 3D models in that. Well, there there technically is, but there's there's no the most of the models in that game are 2D sprites, right? In like okay. a, yeah, and it, it it was a little bit weird. It was a little bit weird to visual visually explain because it's like there's the the landscape is actually you know what the best example I could think of. Remember that game that just uh, the demo came out, Octopath Traveler. Yes. It's kind of like that, but it doesn't look as good. It, it looks pretty decent, but not as good as Octopath in the sense where it's like it's 3D backgrounds but it's pixelized kind of 2D art. Oh, okay. So like The Last Night. Yeah, kind of like that. Kind of like that. Um, so it, it was a good game uh, conceptually wise. Um, and I really wanted to play more, but that, that also hurt it. The other thing that hurt it a lot is that, holy shit, this game was hard. Like, it's one of the most unforgiving JRPGs I've ever played. Because usually, usually in JRPGs, you can you can you can kind of get a rhythm going you do a little grinding you progress you do a little grinding you progress right and there's a rhythm to it uh same with like how you play persona games how i play final fantasy 10 you know i would grind it for a little bit i'd go fight the boss and then continue the story right so yeah. i never felt that i was i never felt there was i ever hit a boss that was like exceedingly difficult it just took me a little bit more grinding or a couple tries right yeah. With SMT4, there were a lot of bosses that were exceedingly difficult. And this had to do with the fact is that you had to kind of balance out your team. Because in, I don't know how they're going to do it for this game, but in, you know how in Persona you have your characters and they all have their own little person that you can summon? Yeah. Well, SMT4, you essentially get to select four different angels or demons that you can use. And they all okay. come with their strengths and their weaknesses. So you have to build your team. But you also have to be very careful because the uh, the enemy can combo off your team. So if you okay. know you, you, you know how in Persona you can just kind of string attacks. Like where it's like, okay, weakness, next attack, weakness, next attack. Right? Okay. The enemy can do that to you. So if you set up with a really... Mm. If you're not careful, you might go fight a boss, and then that boss has the weakness to three of your team, and you might not even get a turn. <laughs> uh. So that was always something that was a little bit frustrating with it. Regardless, I'm excited because, hey, I while I wait for Persona 6 to come out, this will be something <laughs> that I can do. 
Uh, and I'm uh, I'm glad to see I'm glad to see that this is a really this is a big title like this is a big title for the Switch like this isn't like a small like uh, like a smaller like kind of uh, indie game or like like lesser known third party or whatever like this is a big franchise for Nintendo to have for the Switch yeah so I, I'm glad that they're they're utilizing it for sure for sure unless you have anything to say we can move on. Not really. Um, so that, just a quick question. What is the difference between SMT and Persona? So the basic difference between SMT and Persona is that Persona is more... Um, how do I put it? Streamlined? Persona is more streamlined, but Persona is also more. It's very style. It's very style. You know, it's it's all about like the the music, the style, the looks, the aesthetic. Where SMT is more focused on, at least SMT four was more focused on the world and tone. I found that SMT four it was trying to set up this sort of like mysterious kind of tone to the game. And almost like there's this feeling of a little bit sense of dread to the world, mm -hmm. especially when you get to the uh, the um, the secret area uh, after you get past the first part of the game, and the game just blows up into like a huge um, open world sort of map. So it, it's it's I think it, I think the best I think the biggest dis difference between SMT uh, and Persona is that Persona I think is a lot easier to play. And okay. Persona is more, Persona is more about, um, Persona is more about, uh, you know, building relationships with people, like yeah. that's the game, whereas SMT is more about your, your ideals, like what you consider a, it's not, you know, you, it comes back to like one of the more cliche things, just like what the difference between good and evil. And it's more about the difference between law and chaos. Mm. And that's sort of the ideas it's it tries to spin. And it, what the, the point that I got to the game was very fascinating because it was talking about how, would you rather have a world that is governed by law, but you have no choice? Or would you rather have a world in which you can do anything, but it is absolutely chaotic? Mm. So, and I think that's usually the themes that are present in an SMT game rather than in a Persona game. But that would be the basic difference between. Okay, them. and Persona is a spin-off of SMT, right? Technically, yes. Yeah, because because no, the reason why I was asking what's the difference was because like Persona Four is called Shin Megami Tensei Persona Four, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so when you're like, oh, there's a new SMT game, I'm like, but I, I, I thought Persona 5 was the new SMT game, but okay, okay, so they're Yeah, it's, 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 it's weird, it, it, I, know, I know what you're asking, it's, it's really weird in the sense where it's like, it's, SMT was where the series started, and then Persona branched off into its own spin-off world. And then there's also like there's like a separate like SMT, like Nocturne, which is another game... There's another spinoff. It, it's weird. SMT is where it all started, and then it branched off into a bunch of different separate JRPG uh, franchises. Mm. So okay. that's why it's like there's only been five, even though as I'm pretty sure SMT one came out like I think it came out in like '95 or something like that. Okay. Like it's a SMT one is an old game, uh, for sure. Um, but yeah, super excited, super excited. Okay, and then, you know, to, you know, bounce off from one game that we're excited about to another one that, you know, some people are a little less excited for after all the news that came out this past week. Mm -hmm. So, Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Um, just, <laughs> uh, oh, a couple things. First of all, the first thing before I forget is that the release date got changed. Uh, it was originally supposed to be coming out in February. It got pulled up to January 26. So this is one of the few cases where a video game got... I don't even know what the word is. Because you know how you say a video game was delayed, right? Yeah, it's like What's reverse... Of... Reverse <laughs> delay. Reverse counter. 
Yeah, so it got pulled up to January 26, which is good and bad. It's good because, you know, we get it sooner, but it's bad because Monster Hunter World comes out on the 26th of January. So, yeah. Yeah, and if I have to choose, you obviously know which one I'm going to pick. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know. We'll figure this out. We'll we'll burn that bridge when we uh, get, we'll get there. there. But, uh, yeah, to January 26th. Um, the other thing. So, a... Um, a a, an image got revealed of like uh, the of, of like the the current roster. They redesigned what what appeared to be the character select screen, mm. and um, in it the the character select screen was broken down into two rows of eight, and then a third row that Captain Ginyu's um, logo was on. So people uh, so people assume that the roster is going to be um, in factors of eight. So mm -hmm. since we already have 16, um, everybody's assuming that the game is going to launch with 24 because 32 is a pipe dream at this point with the game coming out on the 26th of January. January yeah. Uh, so I was I was actually kind of disappointed when I heard this. Now you know it's 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 weird to say because I've been telling myself that this game was probably going to launch with 24 characters, but I mean, it was still kind of disappointing because 24 mm -hmm. in a 3v3 game just doesn't seem very big, especially yeah. when we've got two Gokus and two Vegetas. Um, but I feel like the bigger issue and the bigger thing that had me, um, uh, still has me a bit skeptical is mm -hmm. that the characters... And now, okay, I'll say this, and then I'll put a disclaimer, right? Okay. The characters, from all the footage I've seen, appear very similar, right? Now, the disclaimer here is that, first of all, it has been the similar characters that people have been playing. What I mean, there's not a lot of Piccolo footage, there's not a lot of Krillin footage, there's not a lot of Boo footage. Yeah. There's literally no Yamcha or Tien footage. Um, you We've know, been seeing uh, a lot of the same guys being played. a lot of the same people. So there yeah. is that. That I think I feel like that played a bigger role um, than I realized. So um, so at first uh, at first I was disappointed straight up, especially mm -hmm. when the second bit of news got revealed. So um, there's they they announced a character pack for mm -hmm. Dragon Ball Fighters. It's gonna be eight more characters, right. and the pass is gonna be thirty five bucks. Now the price I think is a little too high. It's slightly mm -hmm. too high. I would have preferred it was like 30, but that's like, this is like fish market bartering, right? Um, yeah, yeah. If I get the game, I'm getting the pass. Okay, if I get the game, I'm probably getting the pass. Let me say that, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, when it was first announced, I was really disappointed. I'm not even going to lie because I was like, because at the time I was still thinking to myself, 24 characters is just not enough for a 3v3 fighting game. Mm -hmm. um, if it was 30 characters and then they were like, okay, here's eight more, I would have been like, yo, that is perfect. Mm -hmm. But since it's 24, I'm like, you know, I feel like I'm paying extra to get what I feel like I should have gotten right out the box. Now, after thinking about it for a little bit of time, I realized one very important point, right? Mm -hmm. I only need to find three to six, maybe nine characters that I actually enjoy playing. Yeah. That's all that matters. Everything else is secondary, right? Yeah. Um, because that's what I happens. Mean, that what happens in a lot of fighting games. Like a lot of games, you kind of you go, okay, this is a nice big roster, and I like fighting against different people. But realistically, I'm gonna find my characters that I enjoy, and I'm gonna stick with them. Yeah, and um, and so so like all the extra stuff. So say it's twenty four characters, and then they added six more, and then the six characters were well, six characters I'm never going to play. Sure, the number looks good, but in reality, it doesn't have any effect on me, right? Um. Mm -hmm. So I thought to myself, I was like, if I can find like a solid six characters that I actually want to play in uh, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, off the top of my head, so Jedi Strider, mm -hmm. Dante, uh, Captain Marvel, Doctor Strange. Okay, I guess I was being generous when I said six. Five characters that I actually want to play in Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Um, and you know this is with a game with a th I mean it was a thirty character roster, but I actually you know it, it, you know like I said earlier, I don't like like over, well over half of the roster. If even in that situation, I could find a lot of I mean because five is a lot when you think of, when you think of it, right? 
if I could find five characters, a lot of characters that I wanted to play in that game, that I shouldn't have a problem with this game. So yeah. Well, you, you, know what, you know what I was also going to bring up a point? Because you were talking about, like, um, uh, what was it? You were talking about, like, oh, like, uh, the, that list of mini characters, uh, like, like 24 is not enough for a three fighter, right? Yeah. And I was thinking, like, well, that's not, that's not necessarily the case, because one of my favorite fighting games, Skullgirls, has, an, which has eight. It has eight. Well, actually, I think it had nine total. Like Philia, oh, yeah. yeah, Philia, Valentine, Peacock, uh, Double, Cerebella, Misfortune, Parasol, Pain Wheel. Uh, no, you're right. It was eight. I apologize for that. Um, but yeah, like literally, like, and I had a blast with that game, even though it had an incredibly small roster, and that was because I just went with Philia and Peacock. <laughs> yeah, and it's funny you you bring that up because that's another game. Because like after after it happened. You know, like when my initial anger subsided, I was like, okay, let me look for games that I can actually compare this to, right? Mm -hmm. So Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite is not a fair comparison because there's only two, like there's only six new models in the game. Twenty four of the models were just copied and pasted from Marvel Three, right? right. Marvel Three is a better example. Okay, and then Marvel Two is also not a fair comparison because Marvel Two was literally a Mugen game. They took like characters from all these other games and just threw them in. Marvel Three, brand new engine. Brand new models. 36 characters at launch versus 24. So at first I was disappointed. Then I'm like, okay. Then I'm looking through other 3v3 games and I see Skullgirls there. And I was like, wait a second. Skullgirls still doesn't have up to 24 characters. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. So I was like, yeah, you know, whatever. You just gotta... I mean, now Skullgirls also has the ratio system. So you, do, so you don't have to play 3v3. You don't, so have to, you don't have to play 3v3. But at the same time, like, that that was a way to play it. And I, I, don't, I, don't, I think that was the way that a lot of, like, high-level games were played. At least as far yeah, as I can tell. Yeah, so... Yeah, I, I'm not worried anymore. It'll be fine. I think the best example is Marvel 2. Marvel 2 had a 50-character roster, but from a competitive point of view, there were only 10 characters, maybe maybe 15, mm -hmm. um, in yeah. the game. Like, realistically, there weren't a lot of characters in that game because it was a Mugen game, right? So half of the cast was rubbish. Um, right. And Marvel 2, like, had a solid, solid tournament life. It's solid, long tournament life. Everybody that played Marvel 2 loved it. And keep in mind that people played against, you were playing against Sentinel half the time, you know? And people still loved that game. Sentinel was a completely broken character, too. And people still loved that game. So I was like, yeah, I'm overthinking this. I'm not worried anymore. Um, I'm going to pick the game up. Yeah. And, you know, if, if, like, a bunch of characters that, I, that I'm excited for are in the pack, I'll get it. Like, Janemba, I hope, because I've given up hope of any movie characters making it into the game now. Mm. Um... So Janemba, if Janemba's in it, because um, he, because he was, he was one of my favorite characters. Um, um, if, if like characters I'm actually excited for are in the DLC, then I'll pick it up. But 24 characters, January 26th, the hype train, the hype train yeah. continues. Yeah. Um, it was, it was a rough couple of days. Oh, and one last thing. So um, the open beta has been confirmed for January. If you pre-order the digital version of the game the it gets you early access into the open beta but um the rest of us can still get in because i'm not i'm not buying i mean ignoring the street fighter 5 fiasco fighting games specifically i don't like buying digital because um yeah. it's a very because if it's a tournament happening and people are like oh can somebody bring us extra copies yeah i can't if it's yeah. digital i have to bring my ps4 and i'm not leaving my house with my ps4 uh, it's, because... it's, it's funny it's funny you also say because this was back when you were like in enraged with the state of street fighter 5 is that you were pissed off that like i can't even return this game because it's digital like i bought it digitally so that's another thing that you kind of yeah. lose <laughs> yeah yeah exactly but like even even for a game that i love like guilty gear there's times where you know i show up and nobody else brought it so i could i can't bring my own copy because i bought guilty gear digital because not because even games didn't carry it so for this game i'm definitely buying retail 100 yeah, percent yeah let's say hypothetically speaking this game, I love the game, but people in, in my city don't play it. There's, like, two other people that play it. Then I can bring my copy of the game and yeah. try to, like, build the community, right? Oh, yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, like, definitely... let's say, let's say, let's say Fawaz decides to brave the journey that is going over to my place. Um, he can bring his copy of Dragon Ball Z Fighters, and then we can be like, hey, let's play some Dragon Ball Z Fighters. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I'm definitely buying this retail, so I won't be getting early access. 
mm. into the open beta. But um, it's funny when they announced it, they they announced it poorly. They were like that. Oh, you know, uh, open beta. If you want to get in, um, you need to pre-order digital. I'm like, then it's not an open beta now, is it? But it turns out it's only if you want early access. If you um, if you if, even if you don't pre-order you still get into the open beta so i'm looking forward to that um definitely want to try out my man napa oh try yeah give you try out 16 i'm excited i'm excited i can't wait i cannot wait yeah you got um, you got your man napa got my man yamcha yeah 10 0 matchup <laughs> napa versus yamcha <laughs> oh man why oh i can't wait for raditz to be announced <laughs> Yeah. Oh man. But uh, but yeah, good stuff there. Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, so yeah, we're gonna close off on something that isn't so good. Yeah. So recently, EA um, EA sh pretty much shut down Visceral Games mm -hmm. and cancel. They didn't cancel, but they're quote unquote re. Uh, they're re. <laughs> they're passing okay, the. They're passing the momentum to someone else. Yeah, so Visceral Games have been working on a linear story-driven Star Wars games, which sounds which sounds exciting in itself, right? Mm -hmm. But um, apparently it didn't sound exciting enough to EA because EA canceled it and they're passing it over to a different developer who is going to... And th this is like EA have confirmed is going to make the game open world because EA believes that it's easier to charge people for extra content in an open world game than it is in a linear game. You know, when you say um, it like that, that fucking pisses me off even more. Because that's what I that's what that's what I personally think what that that was a contributing factor to why I think Andromeda was such a fucking disaster was because it didn't have to be an open world game. It really didn't. Yeah. And this is another example of VA, but the open world games they make so much money, make it open world. And it's like, no. There are more than there are there are so many good examples of games that are not open world that make equally amount as money. It's just you kind of like uh, it's, it's it's very frustrating because it's like I know I can already see it's that same guy it's the same guy that fucked up Andromeda breaking down the door and saying like hey you guys are gonna make this open world we're gonna grab half your staff for Anthem good luck okay bye yeah like um um I completely agree it's it's a it's it is a shame mm -hmm. um now. I'm part of the problem. I don't buy a lot of linear games. Uh, right. Yeah, like, I don't. When, when, when I read this, I was like, no, no, linear games aren't dying. And I stopped and asked myself, what was the last linear game I actually bought? Mm. Now, if Persona does not qualify as a linear game, I can't remember what the last linear game I bought was. Yeah, I was going to say, no, Persona does absolutely qualify as a linear game. Like, yeah. it, it, it's, it, it, it's, it's a big-ass long game, but it is certainly linear in the sense where you are going down a path that is the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a linear story-driven game. So, so yeah. Um, so, I guess Persona is the last one. Um, okay, so I take back what I said about me being part of the problem. But, um, like, I, here's the sad part. I see where EA is coming from. I don't agree with it at mm -hmm. all. But I see where they're coming from. The beauty of this situation is that it's EA. They're Satan, right? Like we, yeah, like we've we, established we know that. This, this isn't a situation where like CD Projekt Red came out and said, "Yeah, you know, we don't really feel like we should be making any more." Like this is EA. You know, like for me, when I read this article, I was like, "There's." And then my friend added another bit where EA mentioned something about how yeah, open world games is easier to charge people with microtransactions. I just shrugged because I was like, "It's EA. What do people expect at this point?" You know, the first time a, a rattlesnake bites you, okay. Sure sure you know this is my first rattlesnake but the third and fourth time you have yourself to blame so yeah for yeah, me, yeah i'm like i haven't but the last ea game i bought was titanfall 2 and that's gonna be the last ea game i buy for like a very long time yeah. i don't i don't support EA and you could technically I, say it's it's funny you say that but like even though it has a huge multiplayer aspect there is a very linear story mode in that game very well made linear story very well mode. made that's that place absolutely i completely the best i've played in a very long time um mm -hmm. but yeah like i don't i don't support activision i don't support yeah i don't support ubisoft ubisoft and activision are like yo why is he bringing us into this we didn't do anything <laughs> <laughs> i'm like that you know for me i'm like once a once a developer or a publisher in this case you know shows a a, a history of shady practices i just don't support them you yeah. know unless like unless they have like that game that i just love 
that I just love so much. But even then, you know, like, bro, I loved, I loved Hearthstone. I haven't played that game in over a year, maybe even like a year and a half, yeah. almost two years. You know, like I, like, I, I think I haven't touched it since the Whispers expansion. Or... Yeah, that was when I stopped. No, 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 I stopped with um one night in Karazhan. Um, but I got, I got hit with a yog, and I was like, okay. Yeah. I was, the funniest part um was that I wasn't even mad. I was just like, cool, just close the game down and uninstall, and I haven't played the game ever since. <laughs> yeah yeah uh but, but yeah no but it is it is it is, it is it is it is a shame because it's like you know visceral games you know they made they made dead space and i i like dead space one and i like dead space two I love dead space one yeah and it, it's it's like it's a shame in the sense where it's like we never got to see them do anything else and it's like they in like some of the like the like dead space's menu was the coolest thing ever at the time i don't think any game had really tried that kind of like remind me what was their menu they're the they were one of the first games i can think of that had the concept of like when you open up your menu oh yeah yeah it doesn't pause it does not pause the game so you get this extra sense of like am i safe right yeah yeah, because I used to cheat with that shit all the time in um, Resident Evil. Oh, yeah. I would, j- just a quick uh, hack, you probably can't do this anymore, but I can't remember which Resident Evil was, probably Resident Evil 3. Mm-hmm. So I would, um, when my gun was empty, yep. instead of reloading live, I would pause the game, and then you can manually reload in yep. there, and it saves you the time, right? So if a zombie is, like, running at you or, you know, walking at you, yeah. you don't have to sit there and, like, slowly reload. You can just reload in the menu. Uh, yeah, you can't do that in Dead Space. No. So, no, that's a, that's a good that's a good point. Dead Space had a really... I loved Dead Space. You know, mm-hmm. I platinumed. Well, plat, not platinum. I thousand Dead Space. Um, yeah. But it's a pity that, you know, they had to... They, they had to... There had to be a subsidiary of EA because this is just what EA does. This is what they've always yeah. done. This is what there, there's, always it's do. it's funny because it's like I, I, there's a joke that it's like if you get bought by EA, it's, that's where you go to die as a company. Yeah, look yeah. at Bioware. Look what's happened to Bioware since EA bought them. Yeah, B- Bioware has certainly not been doing well, and like, I don't think Anthem's gonna save them. I really don't. I won't be supporting Anthem. Not after. Yeah, one. like when they bought Bioware, everybody was like, "Shit." And then you know some some people you know the 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 more um pop um, um optimistic people were like oh no no let's give them a shot yeah yeah, yeah. that's what EA does yeah. that's what EA does they have the anti Midas touch so, yeah the anti um, I like that I like that that's pretty good so yeah Visceral Games it's a pity because they were a talented studio and I was excited to see what they're gonna do with a story driven uh with a story driven Star Wars game but I guess we'll never know it's gonna be another open world bullshit ass game with microtransactions and a fifty loot boxes uh, loot boxes loot for boxes, everyone microtransactions and a fifty dollar season pass oh, but hey that's fine man. I'm never going to buy it so y'all can kiss my ass EA. Uh, we got yeah. Well, before we wrap things up, because every we could talk about how shitty he is for for hours upon hours. Uh, we got a question of the day from the wonderful J Streets. Just J Streets, and he's asking us: Can video games actually be scary? Also, best examples of scary video games. Um, so the thing about this question, J Streets, is that like there's really several different types of scary. So it depends on what what scares you in general. Right, like we've we, like when it comes to like a, a lot of video games, uh, horror games in particular, they fall into this trap of like the jump scare. Jump scares. Jump scares, right? A lot of horror in general falls into the trap of the jump scare. Exactly. So you get this. It's it's haunted house, right? And like yeah. it can be, it can be, um, you know, sometimes it can be just really hokey, right? But you know, sometimes other times you get a game where it's like. Like as as shitty as it sounds, like I I pr- I played Five Nights at Freddy's, and that did scare me. It really shouldn't have, but I think what it was is that the fact that the entire game was designed around the jump scare made it a lot more effective. Whereas a lot of games they feel very tacked on, right? Yeah. Like they feel very like. Um, oh, we just, uh, we need to make the scene scary. Ah, we'll have it so that he opens up a, a locker and a thing jumps out, right? Yeah. And that's, it's not, that's just not that scary. And that's why when a lot of people f- quote, like, good horror, like, good horror games are, are the games that they set, they make things scary by 
tone or atmosphere. Like Silent Hill 2 is the greatest <laughs> example. I'll keep talking about that game because that game is a fucking masterpiece when it comes to it is a when it comes to its horror. And you can just and that doesn't it, it in that game especially there's not a whole lot of jump scares. The horror comes from this just feeling of dread, this feeling of horror. I've said, uh, like one of the best examples, and there's a lot of like essays that you can find online. They talk about how like some of the best horror is when you see something and you just you don't understand it, right? Yeah. You can't like when you see a zombie dog, right? You go, oh, that's just a zombie dog. But when you see like this hunk of flesh that seems like two bodies like fusing into ego- to to each other in this horrifying scream of like several arms and legs you're like what the fuck is that <laughs> right and that's the best yeah. example i find of games being horrifying and like it's actually really funny like ga- as for me it's funny the the moments that scare me it's my personal fears right yeah. So I'm not a big fan of sharp, pointy objects. Huh. I'm not a big fan of needles. And it's funny that we were talking about Dead Space. Because Dead Space 2 has one of the most horrifying <laughs> sequences that I had a lot of trouble getting through. Oh my god. You Do you know which one I was talking? I'm talking no, about? No, 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 no. I, I'm gonna spoil a part of Dead Space too, but the, oh yeah, the one where 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 the most Pokemon the eye, right? Yeah, it stick a needle in your eye, and you have to just slowly line the needle in your eye, and I just I I had a rough time <laughs> getting through that sequence. And then there was also it's funny there was also another moment where uh, surprisingly in in walking dead uh, the telltale game where you had yeah. to you had to sew one of your you had to stitch one of your wounds uh, and you like, nope. i i had a lot of trouble getting through that sequence because the game was like all right so your your character is in pain you're clearly not having a good time so we're gonna zoom in on the flesh as you begin to stitch it together and oh. i was like ah. <laughs> So that would be my examples of uh, good games. But if, if but if we're just just the main question in general, yes, I think video games could actually be scary. It's just they fall into a lot of pit traps of just being haunted house. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I completely agree. In fact, I think I think video games can be scarier than uh, movies because you have to actively play them, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. You know, like, um, you're watching a scary scene in a horror movie and you just cover your eyes, right? Yeah. You cover your eyes, you let the horrible sounds go by, and hey, there you go, we made it through. But with a video game, if you cover your eyes, then that pyramid head is going to chop you to bits, you yeah. know? So yeah. you better stop being a little punk. And, and, and just man up. Well, also, yeah. it has the added thing where it's like, when you're watching a movie, there's a lot of times where it's like, you don't, you're like, oh, I don't have to be scared because... I'm not that character. It's not me who's getting chased by the scary exactly. monster. It's just, Whereas it's just that games, dumb. That's just, just, yeah, yeah. It, with video games, it absolutely is. And there's games that when you're immersed in the character and you are a participant in this experience, you feel like you are there, and yeah. the the scariness can even be enhanced because of that. Yeah. Um, for me personally, what I find scary in in most uh, video games is the feeling of vul- vulnerability. Mm-hmm. So I, um, that's part of the reason why, I like Dead Space, I like I found the first ep- the first stage in Dead Space really really scary. Mm-hmm. I did not find many of the other stages scary at all. I I loved Dead Space. Just just keep that in mind. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the first stage was really 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 scary for me because I just didn't have enough ammo. I had to melee a bunch of the enemies to death. I, I, I'm not even kidding. Because yeah. I didn't have enough... Uh, on the highest difficulty, ammo is very, uh, is very scarce. So I had to melee a bunch of enemies to death. But outside of that, the only other stage that scared me was that one villain that was pretty much Nemesis. He just kept growing his limbs back and you could never kill him. Mm-hmm. So that feeling of vulnerability is what scares me. It's the reason why Resident Evil 4, as much as I love that game, just doesn't scare me. The regenerators, once again, enemies that were very, very, very hard to kill scared the shit out of me i was gonna say resident evil 4 does have one moment that's actually legitimately scary and that's that lizard boss in the sewer 
That's not Resident Evil Four. Yes, That's Resident Evil Zero. No, I'm t- sorry. It's it's one of the bosses in Resident Evil Four. Remember the the Salazar, the little little small guy. He's got yeah. those two super rad guys that just kind of hang around with him, and he sends one of one of them to go chase you in this underground cavern. Uh. Um. That boss fight is really scary because one, he's popping up um in like sort of like from the ceiling or underneath you and he moves incredibly fast yeah. and in that game especially <laughs> enemies yeah. that move fast but, are scary <laughs> but yeah the regenerator scared the shit out of me because like you just walk into a room and you hear that sound it just sounds easy to make i can't i can't remember it but you just hear that like <sighs> sound right yeah, yeah. and then they were extremely difficult to kill mm-hmm. like because how they worked was that they had these leeches on them and you had to kill the leeches before you could kill them. If you did not destroy the leeches, they would just keep regenerating. That's mm-hmm. the name. That's the name. Um, so, yeah, they scared the shit out of me because, once again, vulnerability. Um, when I was around them, I felt vulnerable. Very, I can't, I can't name, oh, yeah, the other thing that scared me was that stupid chainsaw motherfucker. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, I, I absolutely think video games can be scary. And I think we, we haven't, I, I don't think we've scratched the surface yet. I think we've still got a lot of stuff that we can do. I think Eternal Darkness was one game that had yeah. a lot of cool elements yeah. in it that unfortunately not, not many games have stolen. But yeah. I feel like we have a long way to, we, we, there's, a, there's still a lot you know, of untapped potential in scary video games. Oh, 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 because oh. like I said, video games unlike movies are interactive. So then you can use that interactivity to scare the shit out of the player. Absolutely. I was going to say, speaking of Eternal Darkness and uh, Arkham Asylum, you know what's the scariest thing of all? File corruption. <laughs> so both of those games have a moment where the game just goes your 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 memory has been corrupted and you go wait what and then it just like ha ha fooled you yeah you see that's exactly um you know and, and you know what you know what is even better in internal darkness that is the best and it would only happen during that generation was you get halfway through the game and there's a sanity effect in which like part one is it, basically it's like the story begins now finish the fight in eternal darkness 2 and it's like it's like it's said it's basically making you think that the game just ends there and then mm-hmm. it's setting up for a sequel and then it cuts back to the game like hi ah, we're just kidding <laughs> the best. well i just of eternal darkness um mm-hmm. rest in peace like on nights yeah. uh gone too soon you well maybe not yeah um, I, I, there, there's one silicon knights game i think uh a lot of people would care to forget <laughs> one he says there's oh. quite a few actually there's quite well, a few we digress we digress um, yeah yeah, yeah. no horror, uh, I th- that's sorry say what you're gonna say i didn't mean horror, to cut you i off. think we've still got a long way to go with horror and um I, I i most certainly think video games can be uh can be scary yeah, absolutely. But no, fantastic question, uh, J Streets. Uh, yeah. And if you got a question for us, uh, you can always leave it in the comment section. Uh, actually, you know, if you can, uh, leave some scary moments. Scary moments from video games if you got some. Because I would love to hear more. I want to hear about more scary video games. And who knows, maybe in the next weeks I might be playing a very scary one. <laughs> oh. That'll be fun. Okay. But uh, but anyway, um, so uh, once again, this was your host from Liberty and... Oh, that's Muhammad Yusuf. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.